my name is Graeme Slicer, along with Jamie, Gav, Nina, Steve and Carrie. I help to run a place called the Vintage Guitar Players Group. So if you head on online to facebook.com slash groups slash the vintage place, you'll be able to find us. Now, the group itself is a fantastic resource for information about vintage guitars by JHS. You'll find there um, you know, all sorts of information about the guitars. You'll find information about uh, modifications people have done to their guitars. You'll find it's fantastic if you're looking to buy or sell a vintage guitar from you know, all over the world. you also find that from time to time we also have some really cool competitions and vintage have been super, uh, you know, uh, in terms of giving us things like you know, everything from t-shirts right up to you know prototype guitars and all sorts of things uh, and sample models as prizes which is really awesome so head online facebook.com slash groups slash the vintage place and you'll find us now today uh, i'm going to be taking you through the first of uh, vintage legends series now this is where we would love to be able to really you know get a bit of a conversation with vintage guitar uh, gig musicians and recording musicians so We'll be speaking to people from all around the world, hopefully, uh, from you know all sorts of different music genres, see all sorts of different kind of sounds. So, by all means, please feel free, go down below and click subscribe, and we'll look forward to seeing the group soon. And today I'm here for Vintage Legends with my, Mr. Michael Collinson. So, Michael, firstly, thank you for coming along today. A pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. If you don't mind, can you get the ball rolling? Maybe just telling us a bit more about your music and your, and your own words. Yes, yeah, certainly. Well, I've been playing for about 20 years. Yeah, just over 20 years now, 21 years, starting when I was 18. Um, I'm currently doing... A couple, I'm working on four albums at the moment. Uh, one, well, <laughs> yes. I've got, well, I've got a solo album, which I've started through lockdown and I'm sort of plodding on with. And then I've got three albums I'm working on with duo I'm in called Light. Um, the first one of which hopefully will be out in the spring. The second um, will be more towards the end of the next year. And the third one, which is nearly finished being written, uh, will be out early 2023. So we're kind of planning ahead, mainly to be honest, as, as a sort of kickback against in case there's any more lockdowns, which means we're ahead this time because the last time we were supposed to have the first album out by now, but as we were just about to go into the studio, we got the first single done. Um, and then lockdown happened, so we were kind of stuck uh, stuck at home. We don't live near each other, so we were about to travel, etc. Yeah. sort of thing. Uh, but it did give us a chance to sort of write, um, even remotely together, which was good fun. Awesome. Um, working with Holly's great. She's she's a great singer. Um, she's She writes lyrics with me. I, I tend to do the music because I, she doesn't play an instrument, but... Um, but yeah, we, it's really great. We haven't argued once over anything. It's great. If she says she doesn't like something, I leave it. If I, if I say I don't like something, she leaves it. It's, it's a good, it's a good but, thing in a musical partnership, you know. <laughs> yeah, it makes a change. <laughs> Amazing. So um, I know, obviously, the, the pandemic has certainly thrown us all a number of different curveballs yeah. for many different reasons. What kind of genre would you say that you would fit your music into? It's a tricky one, because when, uh, when I met Holly, she was looking to do like a, a four-piece like a jazz trio with a singer, so a piece of jazz trio, I think, right? Uh, jazz quartet would be the proper word. <laughs> trio plus one. Um, but uh, that didn't happen because okay. we couldn't find anyone else. So it ended up being more folky, bluesy, country okay. stuff. Um, although we're not we're not kind of tied to any genre. We have got... We, we kind of just sit down and write, write songs. We don't really think, oh, well, it all has to sound like this. Yeah. We're a bit more free on that, but that's kind of why we've got three albums because they, they we're sort of separating them at, at the birth of the album rather than the birth of the song. Yeah, so each one with a bit of a different flavour. That's yeah, that's a good way to do things. It gives you that bit more kind of flexibility, and I suppose you know it means that you do get to showcase different you know, um, yeah. you know kind of inspirations and different ideas. And that's it's def definitely a good way to do things. You know. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely overlaps within that, but but there is. Kind of this, this the first one was a, a little little bit considering we're a duo, it's more electric. Um, I'm doing all the instrumentation, and then the second one is kind of back to the folky, bluesy roots. And then okay. the third one, it's hard to pigeonhole because there's, there's a lot going on with that one. That's not completely finished being written as well. So there's um, there's there's a, there's a direction that could go in, but we're not sure where yet. I've also started. I know this sounds daft considering we haven't started the third one. Finished the third one. 
got a couple of ideas for the fourth one. <laughs> but uh, planning yeah. ahead, listen, it's, uh, it's, ahead, it's yeah. certainly not a bad thing, you know. Well, Definitely if you don't not. mind, if you don't mind me asking, how in terms of um, in terms of obviously, I can see you've got a, a number of vintage guitars behind you, and I'm led to believe there's a few more as well. Uh, how did you you know stumble upon the brand in the first place? I mean, vintage has always been on the radar. I mean, they've been going what twenty five, nearly twenty six yeah. years now, so they've been going kind of longer than I've been playing. So from from the beginning of, of picking up guitar, I'd heard of them, and I was. As awful as it sounds, I was kind of put off with them at first because of shops. They didn't really okay. push them. Okay, you, know, you go in, you look, and you say, oh, well, what's, what's this one? They say, well, it's all right, but this is much better. And and you look and you think, well, that was, at the time, I don't know, 250 quid, let's say. And now, and, and they were pushing you to spend 300 or 350, and I didn't. So you can, yeah. it, when you're a new player and a beginner, of course, you gravitate towards the names. Everybody's heard of Defender, you give some, you yeah. found you, you know, you name it. Yeah. Um, and then I actually played one once I'd actually been playing a bit, and I thought this is really nice. It was a it was a telly copy. Okay. Um, I can't remember the model because back then they were different numbers. It was something uh, they weren't like they are now. The, the, nowadays they seem to be labelled a lot better. Um, but and it was really nice, and I regret getting rid of that one. Yeah, so one of the T T Cs. Yes, one of the T Cs. That's one. Yeah, it was just a black. Uh, telecopy and sounded nice, played nice, and I regret selling it. I, I shouldn't have got rid of that one, but um, then I got back into them heavily about five or six years ago when I went into a shopping lot called RWB Music, yeah. which I now which I now volunteer at and do all the um, repairs and, and setups of guitars for them. Yeah. And I bought um, a, the uh, one of the Paul Brett Gemini. Yes, yeah. yeah. It was the, that was the first, which... Gorgeous house. Yeah. So I got that one, which I bought. Um, my parents chipped in. It was kind of a Christmas present, and that was the first one I got. Cool. And that's... I use a lot with the Dewar. That's that's one of the main ones they use. I really love the fact it's got a V-shaped neck, which is a bit unusual these days. Yeah. And it does get really strung, because this is, um, as you know, this has been, can be strung as a baritone. Yeah. Current, currently, it's strung as a normal six string, but you can to, uh, string it down to a baritone, which it does flip between quite often, especially with the Um So I do use that one quite a lot. Uh, but that's what kind of kicked it off for me. I thought, well, that's a really, really nice guitar, way under... Because that's all solid wood as well, that one. Yeah. And it just sounds great. It feels yeah. great. Um, apart from... Lowering the action because I do that on every guitar I ever buy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the action the just behind the fretboard. Yeah, I'm the same. <laughs> but uh, I, I haven't had to do anything to it. It's great. Yeah, it's amazing. It's awesome. Pretty much straight out of the box. Awesome. I think as well, you know, uh, going back to what you were saying, I think there is, uh, in my experience as well, propensity for different places to, you know, get you in and go, here's this guitar here. You know, I remember. Um, was one brand starting with an E, can't remember the rest of it, but yeah, the um, quite a big brand who the the folk in the shop were like, Yeah, you should try this one. And it was when I actually got my my hands on the vintage for the first time, I'm like, This is amazing. <laughs> it's like, How is this at the time? This is like 2010, I think it was, and it was a V100 and Honeyburst. And it was like, Yeah, how is this only 250 quid? You know, um, it's like unbelievable. Um, I mean, what other models have you got there then? Let's, let's have a little look at the, well, the rest um, of the This is an old one. Series. They don't do this anymore. This is one of the AB series. Yeah, the advanced series. The advanced is the AB1 with the bearing coil on the humbuckers, which I love. Nice. I absolutely love the bearing coil stuff. And I've got this second hand because, as I say, they don't do them anymore. Um, but that is an awesome guitar. Um, and it's, yeah. it's quite nice because I've, I've never been a huge Les Paul fan. But I've got, in terms of when I've bought. Les Paul copies in the past. Yeah. This was the first one I bought that I thought, yeah, I can actually keep this one. Yeah. So I always end up buying them and selling them. Um, yeah. yeah, and of course, the little changes with that as well, like the kind of, you know, the kind of extra cutaway up at the... Yes, yeah, you've got the sort of thumb scoop. Top then. side, yeah. And uh, yeah. three controls it's and four there as well, yeah. It's, it's a lovely, lovely colour, which I know doesn't yeah. uh, matter to some people, but I'm sorry, the first thing you see with a guitar is what it looks like. You're not going to pick up a guitar you don't like the look of. Yeah, there's a gorgeous um, top on it as well, you know. Uh, I've got one of these, which is a summer love. 
Tom Sleuth, Love Love, which is great. Again, I mean, I've done nothing with most of these because they just sound so good. I've not changed pickups or anything on many, or any. I think only one I've changed to pick up on. So that's got the push pull to bring in the extra fourth, uh, fourth coil to help book them. It's great. Love it. Yeah, it's a um, like it's kind of weird on it as well. Reverse headstock takes a little bit of getting used to when you're not playing them before. I love, but, um, I love reverse headstocks. It's just like you say, it's the little thing about when you go to tune the thing, you're like, oh, oh other way. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the Icon series tellies, the V59, I think. Yeah, 59. Nice. Double bound. I mean, a double bound telly that looks like that, sounds like a telly and was 300 and some of you know, you can't. Yeah. I, I just couldn't find, you couldn't find anything similar for less. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's nice the double bindings a nice touch in that obviously recessed jack socket too. You know, it's, it's sometimes yeah. little things, you know. Yeah, they, they do it as daft as it sounds, they do it right. And the weathering isn't stupid, you know, it's not just it, it's kind of for the most part it's where it would be. It's yeah. pretty accurate. And the tuners are weathered as well. Yeah. Um great thing. And then I've got this is the newest acquisition. And now this this isn't supposed to look like this. Yeah, this is talks. one of the this is the um, the no binding one, but it, it's supposed to be the it's the tobacco burst. It's just supposed to be a fairly plain top, but yeah, that is gorgeous wood. Honestly, it looks like a it looks like a pint of stout settling or something. You know that yes. kind of effect on it. It yeah. looks amazing. It's awesome, but this one has got a modification. Cool. All I've done with this one is the neck pickup. I took the tone out and replaced okay. the tone. So I took the tone uh, circuit out and put in a um, a very coil on the neck pickup. Awesome. Okay, that's pretty cool. So, so, so now that winds down to a single coil that's and nice. just misses the tone out completely. However, in the middle position, if you if you it brings the tone back in, obviously, so yeah. you can use it with the tone. So it's it's sort of kind of got even extra features. I just but, it, but because I haven't changed the way it looks, you wouldn't know. That's just yeah. a personal thing. Is that well, the... I so rarely take the tone pop down on the neck pickup, it makes sense to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. Is that the only mod um, you've done to any of them? Apart from the V, I've got one of the VRS yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, models in blue, and all I've done with that one is take the neck pickup out and replace it with a um, Iron Gear uh, P90, Humbug Size yeah. P90. Yeah, yeah. I think as well, I like you say, the, I think the, the kind of berry coil giving that extra kind of flexibility I like, especially on a neck pickup and especially on a thicker mahogany guitar, I quite like to have the, the option of taking just a little bit out of it, but it still gives it a nice creamy sound, but it just gives yeah. you a little bit, a lot more clarity to it, I like that, you know. Um, and obviously, hardware-wise, you know, in terms of the, uh, the, the kind of the guitars, obviously a lot of them come with uh, Wilkinson hardware stock, um, some of them come with Grover tuners and such. Yeah, you seem to have kept a lot of the hardware. How, how you quite comfortable yeah. with the, the stock stuff that comes with it? I, I I've actually put Wilk. In fact, I've got a Japanese Strat from '93, cool. and I've put Wilkinson hardware. <laughs> well, okay, fair enough. Yeah, I, I love the Wilkinson stuff. It's great. It, it it does what it you know it does what it's supposed to do, and it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg if you want to buy any to put on anything. Um, it, yeah, I don't, I don't, haven't seen the need to upgrade anything yet. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm with you I think it's, it's, it's good to be able to walk into a shop and pick up a guitar that off the shelf plays like that, but yeah. don't have to think, well, I'll spend that on it, but I'm going to, you know, end up having to spend X amount to upgrade this or that or the next thing. It's nice to be able to just go, Cool. <laughs> it's, yeah. This is my new guitar, I mean, and it's you, know, you can obviously mods. You can do anything you like with things, but it's nice to be able to have one that you've got that kind well, of standard. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, this the VSA five hundred. Um, I may do the same mod I've done on the V one hundred and ten. Okay. So I'm put the neck pickup, but I wouldn't change anything. I think the pickups sound great on this. Um, yeah. It's a lovely guitar, and having done a lot of work on a lot of guitars um, over the years, repairs, etc. Um, I've never picked up sort of other brands, Epiphones, Gibsons, whatever, that, that, that feel 
A, dramatically better, or B, worth the extra £2,000, £3,000. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I know there's a, you know, thing of diminishing returns, but still, I just think that with a small setup, even a bog-standard entry-level guitar can, can kind of get there. Yeah, I think as well, the, the big thing is spending that sort of money on the guitar to get something that plays and sounds and feels like it does is certainly one thing. It also means that it's something. It's quite something to be able to like have that confidence that you can take it with you to play, and yeah. you're not going to get let down by it. You know that's a huge, huge thing. Be it you know at gigs or you know taking a long recording, you know that it's going to be you know rock solid for the for the duration. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a big thing because you know every brand I suppose has you know guitars that come out with uh, issues here and there and such you know from time to time but with these ones it's oh. nice to be able to have you know that kind of that kind of cost point and you know you know you're absolutely sorted um in terms of reliability but one question i would ask um this is just a, a wondering what your thoughts are if you were to come up with your own model now you can go with acoustic you can go with you know uh semi you know hollow you can go with electric yeah. whatever you like if you were to come up with uh your own i suppose you know kind of custom shop one or your own you know, kind of dream vintage, what would you what would you end up with? What would we be seeing? I, as weird as it sounds, I would probably go for something like a V100, but with yeah. a maple fretboard instead. Because mm. you just don't see that. I know Gibson did some maple fretboard, let's fall back in, was it 70s or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But generally speaking, you don't see um, a Les Paul shape with a, with a maple fretboard. No, so I'd like, I'd like that, but with like a Bixby. Ooh. P90 in the neck. Humbucker in the bridge with very coil, um, in like a I quite like the tobacco burst, but the the icon series. That sounds pretty cool. It's making me yeah. think of a little bit because of the kind of finish, a little bit like a kind of you know the strats or some of the strats have that kind of like the shaped guitars have that kind of yeah. like sunburst with the the kind of maple neck as well. And that sounds a maple board. That sounds pretty awesome. So you reckon you know kind of a nice kind of tobacco burst maple neck. Big spin that so it's pretty good. What about anything else? Would you have any acoustics or anything, do you think? I'd... Oh, acoustics are so hard because I've got the, the Gemini. I've, all, I've all, also got the other Paul Brett, the... Uh, is it the VE8000? Oh, yeah. The, the Parler, Parler yeah. guitar. And I've got the Rory Evans acoustic uh, signature model, which is fantastic as well. Love that. Um... I suppose it would be nice. I, I kind of wish they did a. I know they do a couple of twelve strings, but I kind of wish they did a. It's um, a couple more, but maybe I've I've I played recently a guitar a friend of mine's got, and it's um, it's a long scale, but it's not a baritone. It's just a okay. slightly longer scale guitar yeah. acoustic. And he tunes it to Dad Gad most of the time for what he does, and it sounds okay. brilliant. So maybe just a slightly longer scale, bigger bodied, just something that I don't. Know, it's hard to say with acoustics, isn't it? Because there's it's <laughs> kind of there's, there's only so many sizes and shapes yeah. compared to electrics that are a lot easier. Um, what do you I reckon, like finish wise? Finish wise, I'm kind of. A sucker for, for the darker stain, you know, a bit like the Gemini. I do like the sort of darker stain stuff. Yeah, the more rustic. Uh, yeah, the, the, I, I, I like the open, I like the slotted headstocks as well. Yes. So, but I know, but again, vintage kind of do that because they've got the antique series the, ones. They've got well, they've, yeah, they've got a few different ones, haven't they? Which are the slotted headstocks and yeah. the darker woods. I mean, the, the Stakespeare's, which aren't slotted headstocks. I mean, I've got one of them to be fair. One of the stakes for the um, the orchestra sized one. What were they? Hundred pounds or something? That the crazy. Yeah, hundred quid. That's it's amazing. <laughs> you I, know, to be able to pick some off that place. I actually bought one and put a pickup in because okay. I quite liked the because I know they do the one with the pickup, but that's got a cutaway. I quite yeah. like the idea of one with a pickup without a cutaway. So yeah. I bought the, the cheap one and I had a fisherman pickup which I put in. Sounds great. Yeah. You know, the pickup costs more than the guitar, but um, <laughs> well, it's, it's a really good guitar. It's not bad. Um, I gig with it. I literally gig with that as well sometimes. I mean, so I'm gigging with a hundred pound guitar, three hundred, four hundred pound guitars, and to be fair, not vintage, but I've got some fret kings as well, which are not okay. Yeah, yeah. Related. I, I love those things as yeah, well. Yeah, of course. But yeah. um, 
But I've got, I've, I've, I've made a list because I'm trying to remember how many I've got. And there's 18 vintages I've got now. Uh, <laughs> so, um, including a couple of the Silverburst 25th anniversaries, I've got the, the first run of the Strat, uh, the V6 and the VS6, the SG yeah. copy. Yeah. Um, Very nice. Which, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge SG fan, so I had nothing that was that shape. Okay. But I thought, if I'm going to get one, I'd rather get one that was a little bit special. So I managed to get hold of one of the VS6s, and it does sound great and play great. I don't play it as often as the others, but again, it's not because of the guitar. It's a fantastic guitar. I just, it's the, it's the shape is not my thing. But now I've got one, I'll never get rid of it, and I'll never need another one. It's yours for now. I've got, as in, I've, I've, again, I've got um, two of the B100s in Silver Burst, yeah. and the... VS6 as well. Um, having seen the VS6 with the Zebra pickups, I actually took the Zebra pickups out of a V100 and see through black and stuck them into the V100 and Silver Burst and took black. a pair of all cream Wilkinson uh, humbuckers and stuck them into the see through black. So it looks pretty, yeah. pretty interesting. Interesting is the word, it's probably a bit of a marmite thing, but it looks pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> but um, music wise, then. Obviously, you've got uh, stuff in the watch just now, and you know um, some releases coming up in the spring. Whereabouts can we find your music online? Yeah, um, well, on on Spotify, if you look under Mike Collinson, there is a little EP out called which I released uh, earlier this year called "Standing Holding Flowers," which is the main song off it, which was a tribute to me, Mum, who we lost in uh, September 2019. Um, also, if you look at the Lights Acoustic Duo, we've got the single on there, which is called I'm In Love. And obviously, the, the album will be coming very mm. soon. Um, we've got two more sessions, I think, in the studio to finish it. Cool. Um, we should should finish the recording in the next session, and then we've got one session to go back and just listen to it all, add bits that we've missed, <laughs> correct okay. anything that's wrong. Touch ups, yeah, um, great. And then... we're, we're also on um, Bandcamp. Again, the lights, acoustic duo, or Mike, Michael Collinson, or Mike Collins, whichever it's under. Um, but so yeah, we're on both of those, and awesome. Facebook and Instagram. Again, same names. Awesome, perfect. Well, let me today say thank you very much, obviously, for your time and for coming along and for, for sh- telling us all about your music, telling us about obviously there's a, a cracking guitars you've got there, and obviously there's a room I think full of them somewhere else in the house. <laughs> uh, but very much appreciated. Obviously, they're all behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, man. Well, I would say obviously to anyone, obviously check out um, check out Michael, check out obviously the, the vintage uh, group on Facebook, the vintage players group. Check out JHS Vintage Guitars online, and of course, please every everyone you want to hit subscribe below as well, and obviously check us out next time. Thank you again, Michael. Cheers, thank you. Thanks, man. <laughs>